got to scrunch in and get in this camera frame. <laughs> Austin is telling me that that's how we do it in the biz. Yeah. <laughs> Either one of you guys ever watched the podcast before? I have, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Listen to so it. you know what you're in for. <laughs> you're, you're in for an excellent time because Aaron Gustin is in there busy in the meeting. Yeah, so he can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He can't talk the whole time. Yeah, you might actually be able to speak on this. Might get a one. couple words in, yeah. <laughs> this is really great. How many jokes can I just dig in on him while he's not around? <laughs> just all of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's not, well, okay, let me introduce you guys. We have Ben Sutton, the executive director in Martinsburg, West Virginia, and Rhett Jones, the executive director in Boise, Idaho. Yeah. All right. How's it going, guys? You enjoying Nashville so far? Man, it's awesome. It's yeah, awesome. I think it's, it's great. Yeah, Nashville's cool. Um, and uh, the ceremony or the, the events itself are just so much fun, man. I'm having a blast. You might want to have to get on that. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Get up closer. That's, that's in the biz stuff. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When did you guys get into town? Uh, we got in Monday morning, uh, flew in. Um, beautiful flight. Uh, got here about 11 o'clock. Right. Um, I got in Sunday evening after last year when I flew in like and landed 20 minutes before the reception and I'd <laughs> yeah, I got an airplane for 15 hours. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to do better. So I was like, yeah, I'll take advantage and came out. So I've been I, out I since Sunday, that. Sunday evening. I remember you came walking in. I can see it right now. <laughs> oh, you yeah. had a purple shirt? Hey, is that right? Uh, yeah, I think so. God, look at that. <laughs> came in looking, worry, just man. looking lost for day one of employment. That's for, fun. Yeah. So yeah. it's like today, Caitlin uh, yeah. Carter in there. It's like, it's, how long have you been here? Today's my first yeah, day. Today. <laughs> yeah, today. Yeah. The first day. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, well, what a yeah. way to experience that. Uh, yeah, so have you got the chance? Are you staying tonight, too? Yeah, yeah, we we uh, we opted to stay one more night. Uh, we wanted to come Sunday, but it was my son's birthday, so we uh, we mm -hmm. stayed there. Obviously, uh, celebrated with him. Came Monday. Uh, we're looking to have a little little fun down there on Broadway tonight. That's what I was wondering. Are you going to get a chance to enjoy the city a little bit? Have yeah, you I'm ever been to Nashville to before? You live far away, man. I do. I live far away. Um, I haven't been to Nashville. Like I've got family that lives in like not the area, but lives in Chattanooga and all over the place. And so, um, my mother has told me that she, like I need to go to Hermitage House it's like I don't know, some historical thing um, I'll probably just go explore Broadway <laughs> because that <laughs> that sounds right there, more man. intriguing <laughs> so, and I don't have to go yeah, so yeah, far yeah. maybe that's what but she meant probably not my mother no she <laughs> meant go find historical sites and okay. see them that's her thing <laughs> Well, you've been here, I assume. No, it's my first time. Well, first gosh, time. you know what? True. But so this is a geographical quirk for those who are not familiar. Uh, you know, we got directors all over the country. West, where I live in West Virginia, you, we live in the same state. Right. We right. are not remotely close to each other. No. I, at one time, I was sitting in my living room. I've told you the story maybe once. We were trying to decide. Back once upon a time, the next office we wanted to open, should we do it in Martinsburg, West Virginia, or Ann Arbor, Michigan? And I put from my house in Barbersville, West Virginia, Google mapped how long it would take to drive to each one. It, they were to the exact minute. Yeah. And I thought this was so That's odd. So the crazy. exact same distance away <laughs> right. to get to. So you're talking like <laughs> Michigan or this other place in West Virginia. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you're basically in Washington, D.C. Yeah, very close, about an hour our way but um yeah you're absolutely right uh it, you, barbersville is about the halfway point from martinsburg to tennessee so that's yeah that's so for me to see you've surely been here that's like me saying to somebody oh, you've been down right. in new mexico right i mean <laughs> right, right, right. it doesn't make any sense so my apologies okay well good i'm glad you guys are getting to do that and have some good yeah. time we tried to pick a place where it'd be a little bit warmer and that didn't exactly work out it's pretty chilly here this yeah week. yeah you know mid 50s so it's doable not terrible but i came from 35 degrees so i'm happy with 35 <laughs> like i'm not you complaining got the, you got yeah, the <laughs> well that, that you're right so for example chicago is thrown out there as an option i bet you that lake effect right now is uh, yeah. mighty oh, frigid. Very for sure. frigid, yeah, for sure. So it's I'm over here whining in about <laughs> mid fifties. <I'm, laughs> sorry, well, you guys tell tell you know the listeners a little bit about how things are going at your office and what kind of challenges you're facing, what successes you've had. Brett, you go first. Yeah, um, Boise has been interesting. Um, so the market out there is incredibly huge for like it. So in the nation, it's like the biggest up and comer for new personal care companies. Um, and we have 
a fifth of the population of most other places because we've only got a million and a half people in the whole state. Yeah. And where you guys are talking about your far away hour and a half to get to the other side of West Virginia, it's eight hours to get to the other side of Idaho. Um, and so we've got a million and a half people spread over 18,000 square miles. Um, and so it's been it, it, like the year started kind of slow um, and had to really like not only work on like, okay, I've got a lot of competition. So like, what is the niche that I can um, like kind of bank on to get the VA to be more interested in me and to get like, to really sell to referral sources and clients and things like that. And um, it took me a little while to figure it out, but I, I, I found the advantage to being the nation's largest privately owned um, caregiving companies. I don't have the restrictions that a lot of like the franchises and stuff have. Um, and so over the, over the fall and late summer, I was able to really realize like, well, my niche is I can go anywhere mm -hmm. in the state. And because we've got a lot of like in the middle of nowhere on the top of a mountain veterans that just they're just hermits in the mountains, but they want somebody to come out and clean their house. That's what I was going to ask. Do yeah. you get, how far away have you been pulled to your farthest um, client? So my farthest client is four and a half hours away from my office. Um, and that, and that's not even like, I'm only like, I really only have clients in like the bottom half of Idaho currently. Yeah. Um, and so it's four and a half, but it could get farther. Um, but four and a half hours is the farthest one. Um, I've got two clients that are about four and a half hours away. They luckily they live near each other. Um, so I'm able to pull off there one caregiver. Go, that's um, but, but so yeah, but realizing that the VA has started to pick up on like, Oh, if we have this, like if there's this town that's got 15 people that live there, village caregiver is going to find somebody to go. Cause I can say, well, I don't have anybody in the area, but I have someone that will accept me saying, Hey, you want 50 bucks to drive, two hours yeah. um, and go every day. And they're like, yeah, like I can incentivize people a little better than, than what they can to make sure that people are getting care. Um, and so it's been, it, it was an interesting slow year, but we're starting to pick up. I'm just going to brag this, this month will be the best month we've had so far in Boise. So congratulations. Uh, be happy yeah, to close out the, close out the year close of our best month so note. far. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Well done. Bravo. I tell you, but Idaho is a beautiful place. Oh, yeah. For people listening that have never been to Idaho in your life, you should make that a point. Yeah. I feel like, for some reason, at least around here, anyways, West Virginia type. Montana gets all the pub. It's like the beautiful <laughs> it's true. frontier, big oh, yeah. sky. Man, Idaho is just like that, though. When I've driven through there several different times, and my wife and I, during COVID, you couldn't really do much yeah. of anything. We went on a whole just massive loop around the United States. Yep. Had a had a tent in the back, and we <laughs> nice. would just throw it up in like oh, a yeah. KOA campground camp out and stuff. And we went through Yellowstone and then straight west. It's like Idaho Falls area yeah, and yeah. That stuff. Yeah, Idaho. God, Idaho, it's Pocatello. pretty. Oh yeah. I mean, it's what a gorgeous. Like the whole, honestly, the whole state. Because um, like we, so Boise, we we call ourselves the Valley, but like we're just literally right in the valley like it's just mountains like the whole yeah. state is mountains and we i think montana gets the like oh montana just because it's bigger <laughs> like i don't i don't think maybe because it's, right. it's the same mountain ranges exactly like right it's, up the west side of montana is the east side of idaho it's the exact same yeah, mountains. somebody just put a line on the yeah, map it's not like it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's exactly the same like yeah it's, and that panhandle section i've driven through there too at coeur and oh yeah beautiful oh, oh, yeah. i mean good it's unbelievable anyways i could go on about that forever but uh i'll switch over here to ben in yeah. martinsburg yeah hey, you know you've done a lot of tremendous things last night you won an award for most improved office yes yes sir yes, under sir. your tutelage it has yeah. it's 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 changed for the better in so many ways you know not just dollars and hours and stuff but the compliance and i don't i feel like the the culture of it um the caregivers are always you know, giving great feedback about you and Casey. Oh, well, talk talk a little bit about that. And by the way, your speech last night was really excellent. That, oh, well, that, thank that was you. one of the ones that back in the room with with my wife where we she even brought up she's like, Ben from Martinsburg. That was really <laughs> nice. But you know, his words. So and oh. I am not just saying that. So well, well, thank talk, you so talk much a little bit about that, your yeah. office. Well sure, sure. Um yeah well, um when I came in, well, first off, you know, you, Steve Staffelina was there before me, and, and he really helped add some structure 
that need it to be there to succeed. That's right. Uh, so, you know, honestly, I kind of forgot about that. He was over in Baltimore and mm -hmm. came back to pitch in in Martinsburg. He did. He did. Shout out Steve Staffolino. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> no, but yeah, he, he set up some initial structure. Um, and so when I came in, um, I felt like I, I was handed the keys to something that was ready to go. We hadn't quite hit, hit it yet. Um, and so just getting to know Casey, my director, uh, and finding out how we're going to work best together. Um, didn't take long, and we meshed, and uh, we were off. And the culture is really what what we wanted to build on, because Village Caregiving has something special, and, and, and we all we all say that. We all know that um, there's something special here, and uh, we just want to extend that as far as we can to our caregivers, to our clients, um, really make everybody feel important. And, and, you know, and have confidence that what you do is making an impact on this world. You know, we can't impact the world on a major, you know, major scale all the time. But what we can do is impact our, our communities, our, you know, our friends. Um, and, and so if we're able to have these positive impacts um, on, on a local scale, that is going to grow and then imp help impact the world in a, in a positive manner, I feel. so. Well said. Yeah, and that kind of stuff becomes more important to me all the time. I don't know if that's a part of just becoming more mature mm -hmm. and hopefully a little wiser as you get older, but um, yeah. it's just if we're not doing those good things and helping all the people and serving the purpose, and it's not just for me. You guys talk, can give me your response to this. So sometimes I wonder, you know, which which resonates with me more strongly is it the client side of it which i obviously i care about both of these i care about <laughs> wanting to make the end of life for this person as easy loving caring as we possibly can and for the family in the home and then the other side of me is our employees and that's directors like yourselves but also the caregivers uh, i want to make it a place where people enjoy coming to work to think about somebody you know life's hard enough there's a it, it'll beat Absolutely. you down yeah. man right yeah, and to have sure. to go to a job which it, that sucks too i w that's just something that motivates me every day i want this to be a really good place and so there's two different kind of purposes you're trying to serve there i feel like the one that resonates with me i'll just be transparent is more the employee side again not that it's not the client well, that's sure, why i started sure, the company right. I, my grandmother needed the service i get it but man, there's something that gets me out of bed every single day, equally as much as the client side is just making the environment where people want to go work. Right. Well, what we've learned very quickly is if you have happy caregivers, that's going to reflect onto the client. That's they're, right. They're going to provide that care. They're, they're going to come in with a smile. Um, and then that's going to affect the client in a positive manner. So yeah, I don't like to say we put more focus on the caregivers, but I like to think of it as even. You know, we, we like to put uh, as, as much effort into making sure our caregivers are happy as our clients. I would almost even say that, like, the way that you take care of the clients, like at the ED level, like the way that you take care of your clients is by taking care of your caregivers. Like, without, without good caregivers, we can't care about the clients uh, unless we're going to go take care of them right. ourselves. Right. And as, uh, as I've told several clients, you want my caregivers. You don't want me to be the one that's coming in helping you because they're great. And I, ask my children, I'm not a caregiver. I'm really good at finding people that care. Um, and you take care of those people, and then your clients are happy. Like, I get... I love, I like to go visit my clients just to hear about how yeah. much they love their caregivers. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. Guys. See, you articulated what I was kind of thinking and trying to say. <laughs> in the way, but you're right. If you're not care, taking care of that employee the right way, of course it's not going to be good care. Right. What, are you going to treat them like dirt all day right. long? And then they're just going to go magically be the nicest person exactly. in the house? Exactly. That makes no yeah. sense. Yeah. So. All right, thank you. guys mind to just come around with me wherever I go and help me speak? <laughs> It'd be really sure, nice. Sure. Yeah, we can do that. That'd be that. It's needed, apparently. <laughs> um, what? Let me ask you. I'm, I'm going through an executive leadership, integral leadership program course mm -hmm. right now myself. Never too old to learn, right? One of the uh, one of the. Cha it's called Stegen. Really good folks and really smart. I have mean, this coach. Guy's a genius. Um, and so one of the exercises that we do a lot of times is we think about what are your personal core values. If you want to, it's called walk the talk exercise so that you have congruence. Are your actions and the things that you're actually doing matching what you say you want to mm -hmm. do and you say you stand for? 
or is it incongruent? So that's one of the things we think about a lot. One of your answers just kind of made me think of that. What would you guys describe as your personal core values? I'll buy you a second while you think. So I, we were tasked to pick, you know, five or six of these things. You don't want like 30. You can't <laughs> boil it down and remember right. them all. But, so that can be anything from family, learning, health, happiness, faith, integrity, God, children. I mean, I'm, it's, there's a list of like a hundred different things. Some of those words may have resonated a little bit more than others, but okay, I've bought you a second. Uh, what, ben, you can, you can talk first. What, what, what are your personal core values that mean the most to you? Sure, sure. Um, first and foremost, I just try to come from a place of compassion. That's, um, and that, that, that goes back to my spirituality and just being a, a dad and, and so forth. I, I try to just approach it from a place of compassion and empathy. Um, often we get stuck in our own worlds and it's, it's easy to f forget how someone else might experience something differently. Um, and so we might see it in one way, but this other person might experience it in a completely different way. Yep. Uh, so being empathetic is, uh, is very important. And, and I think empathy and compassion go hand in hand. Um, but also just being honest and having integrity and, and being transparent. Um, that's very important to me. Um, you know, I've had, I've had experiences in the past um, with other jobs and so forth where um, you're told one thing, and, it's, you know, the, and then there's, it's, not quite, it's not quite true what you're told or, yeah. or things get shifted around. Um, so just be honest and, and just be transparent, and you're going to avoid a, a, a lot of a lot of negative situations. Love it. Compassion, empathy, honesty, integrity. What you say is so right, too. Whenever you have so, so much of what even an argument is even about is just literally that the two people are having completely different experiences exactly. in this yeah. moment with this conversation. Yeah, right, you know right. what I mean? Oh, it's yeah. not even you disagree that. Right. You don't, what's going on in that person's yeah, life? What's going exactly. on? In that? You, don't, you don't know. So. Yeah. Rip? Um, for me, I... Honestly, it's fairly similar, but I would say like my core value is like my faith. And that drives me to like I wanna show I wanna show compassion, I wanna show love to I wanna show to clients, and I can do that through like helping the widows and orphans. And so I can like in helping the the clients get connected with a great caregiver, like I'm able to do that. I'm able to be forgiving of my caregivers when life comes up like instead of being what would be like a stereotypical employer and get upset because you missed a shift i can be understanding and have the opportunity sometimes to go out and work with the clients um, which is like is a thing that i never did but have done over the course of the last year i've been able to really go out and myself kind of learn what it is my caregivers are doing and get to know and show some of my own love to, to clients. And so it's, it's yeah. very much rooted in like, how can I help the world? Like I'm supposed to show that love and I can do that to the clients, to the caregivers. And honestly, because, because there's some flexibility in the job, I get to do the same thing like to my kids and everything that I, if I have to go in, like if I have to be like nailed into an office every day, all day long, I don't have as much opportunity to do that. And yeah, so, yeah. that's good stuff, man. Thanks for sharing it. What What do the two of you do to continue to self develop and grow and continue to learn? It can be in life or in your career. Um, they kind of go hand in hand, don't they? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, personally, like I'm a big I'm a big reader, um, so I read a lot of books on honestly anything I can get my hands on. Uh, but I I like to I read a lot of like management and leadership and like expanding on those, like how you can be, don't have to be the old Henry Ford type leader. You can be a, like a servant leadership. I really like books about that. And I do, I listen yeah. to just a ridiculous amount of podcasts, <laughs> like on, on every possible topic I can get my hands on. Like I do that. Like, so I'm an artist in my off time. And so I'd like, I'll listen to podcasts. I'll watch videos, like anything to improve there. I do the same thing for everything. I'm like anything I can do. That's like, let me bring 
what my knowledge base and my actions to a new level. Like that's constantly I'm doing that. My kids get really annoyed at podcasts on the radio, but it's my <laughs> like, I, I love it. That's give like, me one or two book recommendations that you've really enjoyed lately. Okay, so like one. So and this is I'm reading it right now, and this is kind of definitely not applicable to leadership, but just a life. It's called The Gift of Fear. Um, by Gavin De Becker. It's about learning to step away from your fear by learning how to recognize actual risk versus perceived risk. Um, it's just an interesting book that I heard him talk on a podcast, and he like he does uh, like he's an advisor to the to Congress for risk assessment. So huh. it's just a really interesting book. Very Another cool. one would be Multipliers by Liz, Liz Wiseman. Uh, Liz Wiseman. Yeah. Um, I've read that book like four or five times. Um, I read it, like I first read it when I like became a little baby supervisor at a call center 15 years ago. Um, and I was <laughs> like, actually... oh, this is really cool. And then I've reread it as I've, as I've moved up in companies and, and throughout. And it's just great. Like every time I read it, I like glean new things. Get something new. It. Yeah. yeah I, the thing I come back to in that book in particular is how there are certain people, and I would put you two in this category, that uh, you say you, the, your employees that work under you would follow you wherever you go oh, yeah. because your talent magnets is the term that Liz uses. Yeah. Is just people, when they get around that, they want to just keep being with They would follow you anywhere you probably <laughs> wanted to go. I, I would. All right, let's so, roll. <laughs> actually, <laughs> you know, if I, I'm going to get a chance to meet her in February. Oh, that's at, awesome. At another conference, Very she's nice. going to be the keynote speaker, oh, and that. you can bet your bottom dollar I'm going to oh, figure yeah. out a way to get a few minutes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and then uh, quickly, a podcast or two, the best, most informative ones you like. So so my favorite podcast um, it's is the Jordan Harbinger Show. He's like old school like the only podcaster that rivals him for like tenure in podcasting is Joe Rogan. Yeah. Um, but he like, I honestly, I like his story, but he gets just incredible guests. Like he's a deep thinker. He's been doing it for a long time. So he, he thinks very critically and asks amazing interview questions. And so he'll dive in like, and it's all kind of like runs the gamut. He won't, he interviewed Shaquille O'Neal once. So that was just interesting because it's Shaq. Right. Um, and then, but like a lot of like neuroscientists and things like that, that are like getting into like weird things about the brain or mm -hmm. like human nature. Oh, it's I just, love that stuff. It is an amazing yeah, cool. podcast. Yeah. What, uh, ben, what do you do to, self-develop um well uh i focus on spirituality a good bit um and i not so much as in a religious context but more just um as a means of maintaining balance so you know i, I don't get too far on to either end of the spectrum and i can just kind of remain balanced and then and view things uh from that state um i do a lot of self-reflection um it's easy to if something happens it's easy to to see the negative from someone else or, or, or what someone else did and, and you want to blame them for it, uh, it's hard to look at ourselves in those situations and, and sometimes be honest about what you did or what you could have done differently. Um, and, and so I'm always doing that. And, and that's for positive situations, negative situations, regardless, I'm always looking at my involvement in the situation and how uh, how I affected it. And, and uh, when you self reflect, is that something that you can do any time throughout a day, or do you carve out time to be alone, lie down, close your <laughs> eyes, meditate? I, like, what does that self reflection look like for you? Sure, um, I, I can do it. I do it throughout the day, uh, and sometimes, obviously, I like to to take a little time, be by myself, so I'm not distracted. Um, I, I do have a meditation practice that I do as well, which um, where I tend to go a little deeper in thought, but um, you know, if something happens, I'll just be like, I need a minute. I'll step out and I'll, I'll, I'll do a little reflection and calm myself down or, or whatever's necessary before I react. Do you ever find that you are, you beat yourself up too much in that oh, self-reflection oh, or are you pretty fair with yourself? I, I'm my, I'm my biggest, uh, yeah, I, um, I'm my biggest critic for sure. For sure. Yeah. That, that's one of the things that my coach I was talking about that we're working on is that I can really self-persecute mm -hmm. pretty hard. Yeah. Probably not the best idea. Some, sometimes it can be productive, I guess. Sure. I don't know. I'm working on it, guys. Yeah, well, no, I'll no, tell you right. how it turns yeah. out. <laughs> it but can it's be a real thing. Sure. It? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. It can be productive, but you can also get down on yourself if you, if you, if you don't watch it. So yeah. And you know what that really turns out to be a lot of times is it's that congruence that we were talking about. So if you really boil it down, 
Why am I self-persecuting here? Why am I being so hard on myself? I don't think there's any that much of a problem. What it normally will come down to is there's something that I want to be. I want to be this person. And my actions just flat out don't match that if I actually look at it and think about it. And that's causing this discomfort. Mm -hmm. And then that just leads to me like beat myself up yeah. about stuff. Yeah. All come, it's all connected to the ego, right? We're getting really heavy here. I mean, we yeah. normally enter the fishbowl. We My God, I'm, gosh, I'm, I'm having Sorry, a therapy guys. session. You, you got Ben and Rudd out here <laughs> dropping the stuff. I'm going to need to take a nap fun. and yeah. uh, decompress. <laughs> all right, you guys, that was a lot of fun. Actually, I could, we used to need to do this again sometime, yes, and I love yeah. to learn, and I'll check out the, the uh, things you cited. Well, thanks, guys, very much. Yes, sir. Yeah. Enjoy thanks Nashville. Oh, yeah. Rhett Jones and Ben Sutton, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thank you.